In this video, you'll learn about the selection and installation of our onboard compressed air system. We'll explain our reasoning each step of the way as we select and install our system. We decided we wanted a quick connect on the outside of the rear bumper and a pancake style tank where the spare tire used to be. Many of the popular compressors that we looked at have a limited duty cycle. That means that they have to be turned off after a short period of time in order to cool down before they can be used again. That sounded really inconvenient to us, especially if we were trying to support multiple vehicles during an era. The system we settled on is manufactured by Vixen, and it came with the pancake tank as a kit. It's a model VX480C, and it is a 100% duty cycle compressor. All right, let's get into the installation. We mounted the compressor in this convenient tray over the wheel well. While the compressor fits perfectly in that space, getting to the underneath side of that tray requires disassembling the entire panel. So we didn't do that. We just drilled some pilot holes and used some sheet metal screws with deep threads and screwed it down. We didn't want to be without compressed air in the event that we got a hole in the tank or knocked a hose loose somehow under the truck. So we installed a high flow quick connect in line with the compressor. We utilized the 190 PSI pressure switch that came with the kit to protect the compressor in the event that we're using it with that quick connect. Before we crawl under the truck to look at the tank installation, let me show you how I hooked up the electrical. I pulled a six gauge red wire through the raceway in the driver's side rocker back to a grounded fuse block. After the fuse, the power is routed up to a normally open relay and then on the other side to the compressor. The compressor ground wire then comes back to the ground on the fuse box, completing the circuit. Okay, now let's take a look at the control circuit. We begin with a fused dash switch. One red wire comes off of this switch and runs through the driver's side raceway back to the first pressure switch. The second pressure switch in the tank is wired in series with the first one, and then the wire goes on to the relay. The pressure switches are normally closed and only open up when they hit their set point. So let's walk through how the whole thing works. Press the button on the dash. Power then goes through both of the pressure switches to the relay, which energizes the relay coil and closes the relay. When the relay is closed, the air compressor comes off. Finally, let's take a look underneath the truck to see how the receiver tank is set up and mounted. The receiver tank comes with a wide variety of fittings, so no matter what your configuration, you should be able to make it work. I have an air in, air out, pressure switch, and a safety relief valve. There are also two mounting straps that I made from bar stock. Here we see the tank mounted under the truck. The condensate drain is routed through an existing hole in the rear bumper. Here we can see the two mounting brackets, the air in and air out, and the wiring for the pressure switch. The air in hose from the compressor and the pressure switch wiring are routed in through an existing grommet. And there you have it folks, compressed air to go. Our total cost for this project, including materials, was about $300. If I had to do it over again, I would opt for a compressor with a higher output capacity, but maintaining a 100% duty cycle. Your subscriptions are what make these videos possible, so please click on the subscribe button, and we look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, arrive safe and leave clean. Cheers.